Let's hear from uh, a person that one can only describe as, uh, from every report that we've uh, read on these things, as the adult in the room. Somebody who does speak sense, who seems to be able to rise above the pettiness. And that is uh, Corne Mulder from the Freedom Front Plus. Did a great interview with him recently. Uh, somebody who talks a lot of sense. And uh, here he is. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Corne Mulder from the Freedom Front. Line. Good morning. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for the opportunity. It's good to see everyone here and to be able to participate this morning. Um, I. I'm going to perhaps approach this from a different angle. It's correct that I am a member of the Freedom Front Plus. I serve in Parliament as the um, Chief Whip of the Freedom Front Plus. And it just happened to be a situation that played out where I found myself at the moment as the longest serving member of Parliament. It's terrible. I've been there for many, many years. Uh, some of you may remember there was a person called Mr. P. W. Boerta. When I came to Parliament, he was still the president. And I saw him go, and then I saw Mr. De Klerk take over. And then the transition in 94 with Mr. Mandela. And then it was Tabu Mbeki. And it was Matlantle. And it was Jacob Zuma. And it was Cyril. And I intend to stay there until Cyril is gone as well. And until we have replaced the ANC with a multi-party coalition government that can change this country for the better. Now, that's not going to be easy. And as you all know, at the moment, the talks are very much about coalitions. And the whole question of coalitions, is it possible, is it not possible, what can be done, etc. And my colleague from the DA will speak just now, and I guess Dr. Schreiber will speak about the Moonshot Pact. And I think that would become relevant in the discussion perhaps later this morning. But my concern is that I think we are underestimating the ANC. And I think if we are not going to do this the right way, we will not succeed in defeating the ANC. I think we are really underestimating the ANC. One should understand that the ANC, and remember that they were founded in 1912, and that they are very serious in terms of what they do, in terms of what they've achieved, good or bad. And I don't think they've got any inclination of letting go of power in South Africa. None whatsoever. Um, I don't think that the ANC is really a democratic institution. I don't think they believe in democracy. We've seen them in action in the metros where they were defeated and where we were able to form coalitions. And I can assure you they've done everything legally and almost illegally to try and destabilize those coalition governments. And if we think it's going to be plain sailing next year, if we can get the ANC out of government, we're in for a very bad awakening. I think we're underestimating the ANC. And that means the following. Are we serious to try and get the ANC out of government, yes or no? That's the question. Are we serious? Because if we are serious, then we should understand what the challenge really means. It's not going to be plain sailing. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be a question of, um, well, let's see how things develop. Let's go to the polls next year. Let's all vote and we see what's going to happen. I've been involved with the coalition project for quite a while because I've believed in coalitions for many, many years in my political career. And if you look at our electoral system, our electoral system is a straightforward system of proportional representation. That means it will always lead to coalitions. It's supposed to lead to coalitions because in proportional systems, one single party is not supposed to get more than 50% of the vote. It's abnormal. And if you look internationally, you'll see that in, let's say, for example, Germany or somewhere, one party may end up with 34% of the vote, and then that party won the election, the biggest and the strongest party, and they form a government. We've had an abnormal democracy since 94, where one party continuously received more than 50%. Luckily, it is now coming to an end, I believe, where the ANC will go below 50%, and that gives us the opportunity to form a coalition government. First point to understand is that coalitions are only formed after the election. You can't form the coalition before the election because you don't know what the outcome would be. You first need to campaign and see what the results would be, and if it's possible to form a coalition government. 
When I said what I thought was the answer, and I still believe that's the answer, and I'm, going, I'm still going to push that line regardless of other developments, because if we are serious that we want to get the ANC out of government, um, I don't know if any of you feel that way, I feel that way, that after 30 years it's time to get the ANC out of government, completely out of government. They've had their chance, they had the best opportunities in the world to make a success of this country, they messed it up, they must go. In totality, they need to get out of government. If we do not do that, I am very concerned. I don't think we can afford a further five years of ANC mismanagement and everything that goes with that. So, if we want to be successful, we are talking about regime change in 10 months from now. 10 months. That's not a very long time. It's a rather short period. And then we can only do it the right way. If we don't do it the right way, we will not succeed, we will frustrate the electorate, and we will send this country down the spiral for a further five years when I don't think there will be much to pick up after that. So what do we do need to do? It's no use to rearrange the current 35% of the electorate and the people that voted for opposition parties. It's no use, it's a waste of time. It's no use to try and form a coalition that you build around political parties alone. It will not succeed. It's no use if one party gets 2% more and another one gets 1% less. So what? You achieved nothing. The success of regime change starts with civil society, not with the political parties. And unless we can succeed in getting all of civil society involved, we will not succeed in 2024. You must hear me, you must understand that. Some of you will remember, if you think back, before the 94 process, there was an organization called the UDF, United Democratic Front. It was a broad church, consisting of the totality of civil society, churches, trade unions, academics, business community, individuals, you name them. Everyone got involved to get the regime change and get rid of the former national party at that stage. Unless we do that, we will not succeed. Trust me, we will not succeed. So there comes a time when in society, every, in those different groups that I've just mentioned, that sectors of society, when individual people and leaders and all that people who are involved, no one must be in the position to say, well, that's very interesting. I'm going to follow this closely, I'm going to sit back. I really hope that you succeed. There's no you, there can only be us. It's everyone, it's every one, or we are not going to succeed. That means it's a difficult time where individuals and leaders will have to do what in my language, Afrikaans, is called, you quite often have a meeting, and then people discuss things and they say, well, what are we going to do? What will we do? And then somebody gets up and say, ek sal de doen. I will do this. Ek sal de doen. The time has come across the spectrum in South Africa, in all of those sectors of society, where we need leaders, we need individuals to stand up and say, I will do this. I will get involved. We have crossed the Rubicon in terms of we need regime change in 2024. And what needs to then happen is the following. We need to get this process of a new UDF, a broad process within civil society to get going. It should create a tsunami kind of effect in South Africa where everyone gets involved. First point, if people are not registered, they cannot vote. If they cannot vote, they mean nothing. They can write a letter in the press, it's irrelevant. You need to vote. Before you can do that, you need to register. This kind of broad church needs to get enthusiasm among South Africans to go out and register. Each individual must take responsibility. Are you registered? Are your family registered? Are all your friends registered? That's step one. If you can't do that, you can't vote. If we get the people out there to register, we can win and beat and have regime change. In order to do that, and I'll, I'll try to conclude... There are four groups that we need to focus on, four groups. We need to get out to young people, those between 18 and 35 who have opted out of the system, who have not registered, who do not participate in politics. That's the first group. The second group are older people, my age, 
who have also opted out of the system, mainly Afrikaans, many of them white people, who say, oh, it's not going to make any difference. We need to get them back into the system. The third group is approximately one-third of ANC supporters out there are disillusioned with their own party. We need to go out there, convince them, and get them to support a new beginning. But we must do that in the right way and not expect them. They will not necessarily join some of the current political parties. They can't do that. But they may use other forms and other vehicles to get back. The last group is expats, our people in the broad. We will vote and we will support this kind of approach. We need to do that. Are we serious for regime change? Are we really serious? So what I foresee is this. We get this broad church going. It should have a name. It should have an emblem, a logo. And everyone gets involved. Then political parties that subscribe to what this stands for, because this broad movement should subscribe to the basic, let's say five, ten basic principles. Those things are that you find in international best practice, successful countries in terms of free market, in terms of the guarantee of property rights, non-racialism, rule of law, go and make that list. Then the political parties that associate with that should apply to this UDF and say, we would like to join this thing. What will happen then? The electorate and the public will know which parties are prepared to support this. And then those parties will have their own campaigns, and on their ca campaign posters will be a small little logo also of this broader entity, so that the public know I can still vote for the party of my choice. But I know my party will, after the election, become part of a broader coalition that will govern the country in terms of these principles, and we can change South Africa around. If we do it not this way, we are not serious, we are fooling the public, and we are wasting our time. The winner will be the ANC in that regard, because they will still just continue as is. In conclusion, what does our people want? What do they need? They need hope. They need a new beginning. They need to be convinced that this country can be the best country in Africa, if not the world. We've got all the potential. We've got all the, everything is there. But our people lost hope. They don't think it can be done. It can be done. But then political parties must guess over themselves. Political leaders must understand that it's not about them. It's about the people out there. It can be done. Help us. Thank you. That's why we had to take this microphone to the lectern and say he didn't drop the mic when he was finished. <laughs> Corne Mulder, you definitely uh, seem to understand what, what needs to be achieved and let's just hope uh, more people are on the same page as you.